When we interviewed Kenneth Copeland, and we had some, some questions we wanted to ask him about his private jet use. He got really angry at me, he flirted with me, he tried a couple of different tactics. The job of a journalist is to hang in there and ask the questions. You can't control if they run away from you or what they say to you, but you can control your demeanor and you can control the questions. And that's what I did. I'm Lisa Guerrero, and today I'm unfiltered. If I could describe who I am in just a few words, it would be I'm a journalist, a host, an activist, and basically I chase bad guys. <laughs> the first time I recognized beauty was seeing my mom and the kind of attention that she got when we were out in public. And I would notice people literally double taking my mother. And now as an adult, I look at pictures of her and I realize, oh my God, she's a beautiful woman and she's physically beautiful. She's so beautiful, she was. I was born in Chicago and my dad at the time was working for the Salvation Army as a social worker. And he married my mom, who was an immigrant from Chile. And the two of them moved to San Diego when I was little. So by the time I was three or four, we lived in San Diego in a small neighborhood called Lemon Grove. And my parents didn't make much money, but I didn't know what that meant because I was completely surrounded by their love constantly. And I have a little brother named Richard, and the four of us just had this really amazing, happy life until I was eight years old. And that's when my mom was diagnosed with cancer. And so I lost my mom at eight. And so that changed, of course, my life and um, the trajectory of, of my life. And that's kind of the lens through which I view my childhood. Before eight years old and after. I didn't have a mom to kind of teach me the ways of beauty, but I had an amazing dad who loved me and didn't care what I looked like. And so I kind of got that message that it doesn't matter what you look like. You don't need makeup to be beautiful. You don't have to um, shop at expensive places to look good. Your beauty is something that's inside of you and not on the outside of you. So my dad really taught me that and gave me an enormous amount of strength. And I kind of came away from that part of my life thinking that it kind of doesn't matter what I look like. It's more about, you know, my dad putting me in sports and how my body works as an athlete, not am I cute to boys. So I got a very different perspective growing up, I think, than other girls did. And for that, I really think I was given a huge blessing. So I was born Lisa Coles. My dad's last name is Coles. And because my mom died when I was eight, I was missing something. I felt disconnected to her because she wasn't physically here. And I realized in my 20s, I just felt like I look more Latina and I feel like I am connected to the Latino side of my family. I was an actress before I became a broadcaster. And my first acting job was for a show, an Aaron Spelling show called Sunset Beach. And they ask you when you sign your contract, what is the name you want to be put on the credits? And it was the first time I said, this is it. This is my chance to be a Guerrero. I was credited as Lisa Guerrero Coles on Sunset Beach. Every time my credit would come up, I'd be so excited. Moving forward after Sunset Beach, I became Lisa Guerrero across the board. So I am Lisa Guerrero. Guerrero! I feel great. Like I said, I did a lot of work to get ready Excuse for me. this. Excuse me, can you please get out of my shot? Sorry, go ahead. When I think about my acting career, recently the most fun I've had was in Moneyball because they created this character that was based on me. So I basically got to play myself and it was really fun because I had been in locker rooms for years as a sportscaster um, in real life and then to be able to be in a movie with Brad Pitt and these amazing actors, um, I'm really proud of Moneyball. And then it was nominated for an Academy Award. So that was fun. I'm Lisa Guerrero with Inside Edition. You've got my speaker right there. You just broke into our car.
My acting background has 100% helped me as a journalist when I go undercover because I get one shot. You get one shot at a confrontation, which we call unscheduled interviews. You don't get to say, oh, by the way, I said that wrong. Can I say that again? Because the bad guy will already be down the block or then the jig is up. So it's really important for me to get it right the first time. People ask me all the time, how are you not recognized? So when we go undercover, there's a couple weird things. Psychologically, you are not expecting me to come into your life or your business. Even if you watch me on Inside Edition, there's no way you're gonna think that you're actually gonna see somebody on TV in your real life. So first of all, just the element of surprise helps me. If I'm going undercover, you'll see that I, I'll try to like change my hair a little bit, I'll wear glasses. Once in a while, I've worn a wig. Um, one time I wore a latex mask as an old lady. So I do use disguises once in a while, but I think what I try to do is just put together a character that people aren't expecting to see in real life. So I have been recognized a couple of times, even once with a wig on, it, it was like a blonde wig, a bob. I looked like a real housewife of Orange County and this dude still recognized me. He's like, you're Lisa Guerrero, aren't you? And it's, my producer and I were like, really? How do you recognize me like this? I, I swear to God, I look like a real housewife of Orange County. I look like I was gonna pick up the kids in a minivan from their private school. And he recognized me, it was weird. <laughs> You said that you don't like to fly commercial because you don't want to get into a tube with a bunch of demons. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. When we interviewed Kenneth Copeland for a story we did on private jets and donations to these televangelists, we worked so hard to try to get him. He really tries to avoid doing any kind of interview with mainstream media. And so it's really hard to get him. Of course, we had called beforehand to try to get a sit-down interview. Um, he said no, his people would not let him do a sit-down interview with us. So that's when we go to them. And in this case, we went to Branson, Missouri. We knew he was going to be there to do um, some preaching and some seminars. And we had some, some questions we wanted to ask him about his private jet use. And so for several days, we couldn't get an opportunity to get close enough to be near him. He went right from this you know, door right to a waiting uh, SUV, and then he would be you know, driven off to wherever, and we couldn't get him. Finally, on the third day, we found out that he was showing up to do this seminar, and we found out a place that would be close enough that when he came out of the door, I would run up and ask him for an interview. How are you, sir? We'd just like to ask you about why you don't want to fly commercial. Why have you said that you won't fly commercial? You said that it's like getting into a tube with a bunch of demons. And that's what we did on the very last day. And here's what's really funny about that interview. I hadn't taken a shower in a couple of days because we had been on surveillance for hours and hours and hours. And it was time to wash my hair. My producer said, okay, this morning's a good time to do it because we don't, we don't know where he is. We don't think he's gonna show up till tonight. So go back to your hotel, take a shower, do whatever you need to do, rest. I get back to my hotel, you guys. I'm in the shower and I hear the phone ring. And I'm like, there's no way, there's no way. I reach my hand out and it's my producer going, he's here. You need to get back right now. Get in the car, come right, you need to be here in five minutes come back. So I've got a full head of hair, like wet. I jump out of the shower, I grab a sweatshirt, and my wet hair I put back in a ponytail, which I never do on camera for this. A half a billion people have seen it. Billion with a B. I'm almost unrecognizable, because I hardly have any makeup on, and my hair is pulled back in this low ponytail. And on top of this sweatshirt, I just threw on a scarf so you couldn't see I'm wearing a white sweatshirt. And it's just weird, it doesn't even look like me. Of all the times to go viral, it's crazy. But yeah, no, we weren't expecting him um, to, to stand there and to talk to me for so long, but he did. How much money did you pay for Tyler Perry's Gulfstream jet, for example? Well, for example, that's really none of your business, but... Isn't it the business of your donors? And when he did, and he got really angry at me, and kind of he flirted with me, he tried a couple of different tactics. Thank you, Lord, help me. Just let me, let me pray. This. To get me from asking him the question that I kept going back to, which was, 
did you say you won't fly commercial because you don't want to get into a tube with a bunch of demons? And is it fair to your donors that you're spending millions of dollars on private jets? People are very concerned about that comment. Give me a chance here inside edition. I love your eyes. The job of a journalist is to hang in there and ask the questions. You can't control if they run away from you or what they say to you, but you can control your demeanor and you can control the questions. And that's what I did. I've been on camera my entire adult life. I have always felt a pressure to look good on camera because, of course, television is a visual medium. But as I've gotten older, I've realized that I'm never going to look 25 again, and that's okay. It's okay to have experience. It's okay to have lines around your eyes and age spots, and it's okay not to be perfect. Perfect is boring. What's more interesting is experience and a sense of humor, a sense of confidence. As I've gotten older, I've really embraced the fact that it doesn't have to do with physical beauty all the time, that there's something really compelling and beautiful about confidence and kindness and, and just being a good, loving person. That's just beautiful. I feel good about not wearing makeup right now because this is a well-lit room. First of all, people have seen me looking really, really not good. So, what are you gonna do? My hair's looking all right, I guess. <laughs> I just, I don't care anymore. I'm 55, it doesn't matter. I feel good about myself.